Thanks for listening to Marketing B2B Tech, the podcast from Napier where you can find out what really works in B2B marketing today. Welcome to Marketing B2B Technology, the podcast from Napier. I'm Mike Maynard and today I'm joined by Xenia Muntian. Xenia is the co-founder and CEO of a MarTech company called Planable. Welcome to the podcast, Xenia. Thank you so much for having me here. So it's great to have you on the podcast. To start off with, we always like to have people give a little bit of a background as to how their careers developed and how they've ended up in their current role. So I don't know if you can uh, just explain, you know, what your career journey was, please. Absolutely. My 90% of my career journey is in Planable. So that's, that's where, you know, I built, uh, I built my entire background professionally. But before Planable, I did have a, a social media marketing agency. So I was building a lot of content for brands such as Coca-Cola and some other brands locally back in my home country. And I was doing a lot of, you know, besides social, I was doing websites and branding and everything, you know, everything, uh, digital marketing, everything, uh, you know, was wearing a lot of ads. And I've started building that agency whilst I was still uh, in a university. And then I kind of discovered this problem uh, that we're currently solving at Planable and specifically the back and forth that happens behind digital and social media campaigns. And I've jumped on board on, you know, solving this, uh, this problem and building Planable. And that's what I've been doing for the past eight, nine years almost. So yes, as I mentioned, my entire career has been, you know, invested in Planable. That's great to hear. And it's, it's one of those sort of, you know, nine year overnight successes, I guess. Exactly. Yes. So one of the things you mentioned, Xenia, which I, I always find interesting is um, you're based in Europe. You're running a, a company that I guess primarily serves American customers and is also incorporated in America. So what do you see as the benefits of being in Europe versus moving across to the States? I think considering the type of customers that we have that are very digitally savvy, ones that have a very thorough buying process and the entire product, which is very, very easy to use and also very easy for, for users to onboard. It's a self-service uh, process through our website over Zoom. So there's no point in actually having people on the ground. Uh, we do visit our customers, our top customers from time to time for, you know, to establish a relationship and for customer success. But other than that, it's all an advantage considering obviously, you know, uh, the costs of building something when you build a software as a service product, it's all about the people. And obviously Eastern Europe is a little bit more affordable than uh, North America. So it's all a big advantage to us. And also culturally, you know, uh, building a team that you can resonate with and have less cultural barriers, uh, I think is really important, especially when the team is quite small, you know, under a hundred people, it's really important to have that sync and have that cultural fit. I love that. I, th I think that's really fascinating to try and build a stronger culture within the business by bringing people together who have a similar background. That, that's a, a really interesting point. And I think a challenge for a lot of people who try and build international businesses. Yeah. Something else that is also very dear to us is our in-person culture, which I know is very anti the current trend. But it, it, again, because we're such a small team, we're still a startup in terms of how we think and in terms of how we move. Again, you know, having a distributed team or having uh, foot on the ground in, in North America, that would be really hard for us to incorporate in the current, very bonded, very in-person type of culture that we have. That makes a lot of sense. Moving on, I mean, let's let's look at Planable itself and the product. Can you give me, you know, a little yeah. bit more of a description as to what you were trying to solve when you built Planable? Sure. So when I uh, started building Planable together with my co-founders, I was working on my agency at that point in time, and they were working in other digital marketing agencies. And we all kind of stumbled individually into this problem of how do you present work to clients in a really neat and elegant way? And how do you put the work that you're creating for your clients in the best light? At that point in time, and still uh, now in the present, I don't think 
PowerPoints or spreadsheets or Google Docs are the best way to present moving graphic, you know, very beautiful content that you're creating for clients. And the entire ping pong and the entire back and forth that happens over email when you have to discuss that content is also not very efficient. So those are the problems that we stumbled upon on our own through, through the work that we were doing in our agencies. And we did a bit of customer discovery and we realized that, hey, this is not a problem that we just ourselves are struggling with, but seems like it's, you know, a larger problem, not just in agencies, but also in larger companies in-house and not just in Eastern Europe, but all across the world, you know, people collaborate on social media posts in PowerPoints and spreadsheets. They send it back and forth over email. They discuss it there. And, you know, a lot of mistakes can happen. A lot of things can fall through the cracks when you don't have a very smooth process. So that's what Planable does. It's one single space where you can bring everyone who needs to be involved in the process of discussing content for social from the actual people who are creating it, copywriters and designers and social media managers, but also everybody else who is involved and has a word to say in what that content should look like. Other teams, right? So product teams, maybe employer advocacy teams, HR departments, stakeholders, the leadership, everybody who, who has a say in that content or has specific knowledge to inform and build that content can basically bring everyone on the same page, prototype that content, iterate on it together, discuss it, and then, you know, obviously schedule it and Planable is going to take care of the publishing as well. But it's really that workflow and that back and forth process that we really shine at. And I mean, there's obviously quite a lot of products out there who do something vaguely similar in terms of presenting content for people to review. You know, you said you, you really shine at, at showcasing that content. Can you dig a little bit deeper and unpack, you know, exactly why Planable is loved by your users? Yeah, so how visual the product is, I think one of the first things that our users say when they discover the product is that, oh, wow, you know, it's really visual and it looks so good. The interface is so clean, slick, it's really easy to use. Um, so the interface and the usability are probably the things that people, you know, love a lot about the product. And I think that's really, really important considering that it is a product where you showcase the work and where everybody looks at the work, looks at the content, discusses it, collaborates around it. So it's really important to put it in the best light and, and basically, yes, to, um, to do good by that content. And the way we do that is by allowing you to see how the posts are actually going to look like once they're live, right? So in Planable, when you create content, when you create social media posts for your campaign, you can actually see a, a live mock-up a preview of how that content is going to look like on any social media network, right? So if you're creating content for LinkedIn, you're going to see posts as though they're on LinkedIn already, right? So for Instagram, the same, you can see the grid on Instagram, how everything is going to look together once the entire campaign is live. You can see the stories and the TikToks and all the posts for every social media platform. Pinterest has the same, you know, native format as a pin. So all of them are kind of destination aware and you are able to experience it as though it's live, which is really great for you as a creator because you're working in a more delightful way. You can actually see how your work is going to look like. But it's also very good for everyone who is involved in the process in terms of approving that content, right? It's very often social media managers work with people who are not very social media savvy, um, all kinds of stakeholders that don't know how a specific format of posts is actually going to look like. So you're taking that friction out of the equation and people can see the content, no miscommunications, no questions. They just get how it's going to look like. And it's all a matter of let's change this or let's improve that part. So it makes the entire process of collaborating and approving content smooth. So that's interesting. I was going to ask you about mistakes that people make. And it sounds like one of the big ones is assuming the audience internally who's got to review and approve the posts actually understands the social media network. You know, we, we've got a primarily B2B audience. We, yeah. we probably have a bigger problem with, you know, executives not understanding social media than maybe even consumer people do. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I mean, it, it's really important to be able to gather feedback from stakeholders in a way that is very easy to them, right? So when you need people to get involved in that process, you really need to make it super easy for them to give you feedback. And I know that's from my own experience working with clients. If they need to log in into some tool and learn how that tool works, it's, it's just not going to happen. They're going to call you. They're going to email you. They're going to give you feedback in some other ways that is more convenient and easier for them. So you need to remove all, all those barriers to entry when it comes to feedback, right? So you need a tool that is very, very simple to use where they see everything in a familiar way, right? So if you work with executives on content for LinkedIn, they need to log in and it needs to look as though it's actually on LinkedIn. So it makes it super, super easy for them to be able to give feedback uh, and also give feedback in a granular way, right? So we take feedback to the next level and size planable, kind of like how Google Docs does it, right? So on, in Google Docs, you can uh, give feedback as annotations, right? So you can give feedback on a specific word, like the specific word and give feedback or even do suggestions where you can delete an entire part and rewrite it yourself. So it makes that feedback more specific and it brings more clarity in that process. And that's exactly what Planable does as well. So that there are no mistakes or miscommunications around what needed to be changed or to what part of the social media post were you referring to, right? So it's crystal clear. And that's super important. I've seen a lot of feedback that's come in that's a little bit vague and then the changes that are made are not quite right. And it ends up wasting time for everybody, you know, whether it's uh, two people within a brand or an agency in a brand. I, I love that idea of making the feedback crystal clear. Just moving on now. So one of the things I think a lot of people are looking at is to be able to reuse their content. So maybe that's across different social platforms or maybe that's generating multiple posts around the same topic. I mean, what's your view on content reuse and how does Planable, you know, help you create a workflow that's more efficient? I think for content, it's all about the distribution, right? So it's really important to make really good, really meaningful content, but also to not forget about the second part. How do you get the most out of that content? Very often, and I see that inside our team as well, very often we produce really, really good content and then we launch it once, we promote it once, and then it kind of, you know, sits somewhere and collects dust, basically. So you need to get as much out of that content as possible. And one way Planable helps with that is by bringing other formats of content inside your calendar, right? So very... Typically, when you look at social media management platforms out there, it's only focused on social. So we are more focused on the content and we're helping you bring newsletters and articles and any other format of content that you can think of into your calendar, into your editorial calendar. So you can see it alongside your content. So you can, you know, say that, okay, this, this article, you can collaborate on it. And then you can, you know, transform it. Uh, we have uh, a very, very solid integration with uh, OpenAI and Site Planable. So you can take an article and then you can rewrite it and make it into, you know, multiple posts that you can use it on LinkedIn or, you know, on any other channel that works best for your audience. So this is really, really helpful in terms of getting the most out of the content piece. But also we do have um, an evergreen functionality, right, where... If you have a post that you know has performed very, very well, maybe you can reuse it and reschedule it, you know, every couple of months so that you can get, you know, more out of it. And again, customize it, personalize it a little bit so that it's not always, you know, the same single post, but maybe the concept is the same. And then we, you tweak it again with AI so you can make things, you know, very efficient and you can get that post uh, on an evergreen schedule so you can recycle and use that content in, in more ways than just one initial launch and then forgetting about it. I love that. And am I right? I mean, Planable also has the analytics built in so you can understand which of those posts should be evergreen. Exactly. Yes. So you look at the performance. Uh, we have a snapshot, so we don't go extraordinarily in depth because you can get a lot of data from the platforms themselves. But we give you a snapshot, uh, a real time snapshot of how your page is performing, but also how individual posts are performing. So you can look at what success looks like on your page and what content is successful and gain insights either about producing more content in that direction or directly, as you mentioned, Mike, just taking, you know, one post and rewriting it, tweaking it and putting it on a evergreen schedule. 
that's perfect. And that sounds like it shortcuts a lot of time because you've got everything in one platform, which I think is great. Um, you mentioned yeah. earlier um, AI and the use of AI to rewrite, repurpose existing content. I mean, how do you see AI impacting a tool like Planable in the future? Are you going to have more AI actual origination of posts and images? Or do you think that still needs a human to be creative and uh, write the first draft? You absolutely, absolutely need a human to be creative. AI is a co-pilot. It's a tool that helps you either sometimes maybe with inspiration, but also in other times it, it helps you make your work a little bit more efficient, but it, it's obviously not going to replace social media managers. I can't see that. You still need the human touch. You still need that authenticity, someone to understand the brand and to come up with the concepts and the strategies and the, the creative ideas. And then, yes, you can use AI to polish it. You can use AI to rewrite some pieces, but definitely I, I can't see it, at least not at the moment, to replace this entire profession. The way we have uh, AI inside Planable is um, integrated into the creation process. So as I mentioned already, it can help you rewrite things. It can help you make it punchier, shorter, longer, whatever you need. Or uh, you can even give it images and it's going to create captions out of those images, which you can then, you know, polish and, you know, work with them. 40% of creators inside Planable uh, use AI and 75% of what they're getting from the AI is actually being used live in production. So it's a, it has, you know, a great acceptance rate when it comes to the, the output. So I think, you know, it's a really great tool, but it's definitely not something that is going to replace the work. You still need genuine connection with your audience and a genuine understanding of your brand and your audience. I think that's great. The really understanding the brand and connecting with the audience is, is really good advice. I mean, do you have any other advice for people who are generating social media posts? And I'm thinking particularly of agencies like Napier that might be generating social media posts for our clients. How can we do a better job? That's the big question. <laughs> that's a big one. I think it needs to be very much in collaboration with the client. And you need to be very, very close to the business as an agency, right? You need to really understand what the business's objectives are, kind of what they're after, what the goals are, but also, you know, a really in-depth understanding of the products and the services. And yeah, you, you really need to be very integrated into, into that business. And it sounds like a no-brainer, but I think that is where you need to get started. And then all kinds of ideas and problems and solutions appear once you're very, very close to the business and, and in a strong collaboration with the client. I know a lot of agencies are kind of against this entire approval process. And, you know, ideally they just do the work and not have the client involved in the collaboration that, you know, they've been hired for that. But there is a very big added value to having the client involved in the process. They know so much about the business. They know so much about the brand that they're building and the product. And I think, you know, if you establish a really strong, really candid relationship with your clients, you can get more out of the content and the services that you're providing for them. Absolutely. I, I think that's great advice. And I know, you know, I've heard people complaining about the client being involved and the classic brand police complaint. What you said about honesty is, is absolutely right on. If, if you're really candid and you talk to a client, I think you can then overcome. And to be honest, from agency's point of view, I think it's generally feeling the client is being too cautious, which is then going to impact the results. But I think right. if an agency can be candid, that, that's great advice. I love that. So I really appreciate your time, Xenia. It's been really interesting. Before we finish, there's a couple of questions we always like to ask people. And the first one is, what's the best piece of marketing advice you've ever been given? I had a very good conversation around positioning. And positioning is really important to us because we're in a very, very crowded market you know, B2B uh, technology, but also marketing technology. I don't know if you've seen those, you know, marketing technology maps, but they're gigantic. So it's really important to understand who your ideal customer is, who is actually getting the most value out of your product and your service, who loves you the most, basically. And think about your positioning around that. And I think we should have thought about how we position our brand earlier. I wish we did that earlier, but I think 
this advice and this, you know, conversation that I had around positioning with someone that was really, really good. And uh, I'm, I'm happy we finally did it. And, you know, it clarified a lot of things internally as well. I think that's great. That, that's really important. I think quite a strategic bit of advice as well. The yeah. other question we like to ask people is around marketers entering the industry. So if you were talking to someone who maybe is just finishing a you know, university degree, about to enter marketing as a career, what advice would you give them to help them be successful? Try as many things as possible in the marketing space. I, I started as a generalist. So I think, you know, if you try a lot of things, you get the occasion to do that, you get the opportunity to actually wear a lot of hats in the marketing space. I think that's great. I think you expose yourself to a lot of things and you can understand what are the things that interest you the most, what are the things that you're good at, you know, by getting that really broad exposure to all of the things marketing, you can find what are the directions that maybe you want to specialize in, or maybe you want to be, you know, continue as a generalist. That's, you know, a path as well. But I hear that a lot of, you know, people, especially early in their career, you know, complain a lot about like, oh, you know, and you can see a lot of memes on TikTok as well about all of the hats that you wear as a marketer. And I think that's great, especially early in your career. I think that kind of exposure, you get to learn a lot from it. And it's really, really good opportunity. If you want to specialize later on, obviously, you know, you can go into that path. But I think that early exposure teaches you a lot about the different mixes and parts that are, you know, the world of marketing. Thank you. I, I think that's awesome advice for anyone starting a, a career in marketing. So. Thank you very much. I mean, Xenia, I really appreciate your time, all the insights you've shared. If somebody's listening to the podcast and they want to find out more about Planable or maybe, you know, ask you some questions about what you've said, what's the best way to do that? So the best way to do that is either to reach out on LinkedIn and let me know that you've heard me in this podcast and absolutely connect with me. I'd be more than happy to talk. And also, if you want to learn more about Planable, you can just go to our website, planable.io. We have uh, a free plan. You can test the product on your own for a month. So you can see, you know, if it's a problem that you have and if this solution that we're building is something that works for you. But yeah, reach out on LinkedIn and, you know, just go to our website if you want to check us out. Thanks so much. I really appreciate all your time. And thank you for being a guest on Marketing B2B Technology. Thank you so much for having me here. Thanks so much for listening to Marketing B2B Tech. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe on iTunes or on your favorite podcast application. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website at napierb2b.com or contact me directly on LinkedIn.